Andiamo. Ian, in the grand scheme of the rugby championship standings at the moment, this game on Saturday, do you see it as a draw die or Oh, from a rugby championship perspective, it's very important. And, you know, it's, um, it's uh, you know, I guess no one's really established himself at, at, at the top at the moment and would have liked it to have been us, but we haven't. And so, you know, this this game's vital for us. And if we want to push through, I, this is the first of three. Do you feel like the pressure is on back on you guys again a bit more as opposed to last week? Well, probably the same answer to the last question. You know, it's a championship that we want to win. And this is a vital game, so you know. I think um, when you look at last week, we, 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 I mean, we're bitterly disappointed with the result. There's no doubt about that, because we. And when you're looking at the game, you're looking at the first fifty odd minutes and thinking, well, that group did a good, had a good base for that game. We, we should have been good enough to push through and, and, and win it. Um, we weren't, and we clearly got a bit flustered under under a bit of pressure and a narrow of our options so on field get better than that and that's I guess the next part of, of this group is getting consistency in that last part of the game uh, but from a championship side yep it's it's a key vital game and so you have, you have to go in and win this one. The decision not to change the starting 15 what makes you confident that these guys can go out there uh, and, and turn the result around? Yeah a lot of that's based on on the performance earlier in the game you know I thought we we kept them in the game with, um, you know, probably some inaccuracies on that offside line, which was frustrating. And they went three, six, nine, twelve, and stayed in, in the hunt. But um, overall, I, I thought scrum was strong. You know, the line out functioned really, really well. We were, you know, our, our carries were going good. We, we were seeing the kicking space. We were actually doing a whole lot of good stuff. And and I think that group's. Um, you know, we're back in that and making sure we actually grow and get a few more lessons from that as well. With some tough conversations about performance, discipline and things like that you had to have or the coaching staff had to have with some of the players? Yeah, look, I think it's... You have those conversations anyway. Um, they're always a little bit... have a bit more rigour after a loss. Uh, and particularly games where we... We were giving teams a lot of kickable penalties against us, and you know, eight, 18 points where where we're feeding their their, their psyche is, is frustrating. You talked about the, the staying with the starting fifteen being a result of the the start to the game. Is the four changes to the bench therefore a result of the way you finished the game? Yeah, I think there's a little bit of that. I, I think um, you know, like in Brody's case. Um, He's probably returned to play more than anything. It's it's tough on Tupo because he didn't actually get on the field, and, and again, so he's a, a guy with a lot of time for. But you know, we're utilising this as a chance for him to play NPC and get some minutes. Um, I think Dalton, you know, we've been desperate to, to give him some some game time, and this is so he's he's clearly a guy that we we've got a lot of confidence in. So it gives him a chance to get some minutes, and Bodie's also coming back from injury, so. Um, and you know, Colsey. Well, he's he's Colsey, really. He's he's hitting all hard and clarity sessions and doing all sorts all sorts of things during the week. So he's ready to go. Has Cody paid the price for the, the misfunctioning lineup in that second half? Oh, I don't think Cody was at his best. I had to admit that. And um, but you know, we have got a lot of faith in him. He's a quality rugby player. But sometimes it's. You know the right thing to, to get that is to, just to take him out and 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 just to, to work hard on things behind the behind the scenes. Has there been a greater responsibility put on the leadership group this week, given the ill discipline and, and that second half to tidy up that area and, and get the messages right on the field? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure about the ill discipline so much. I, I think in the first half there, there were four defensive penalties that that were frustrating early. Um, the second half was more about. You know the amount of territory and field position we, you know, position that we had, and yet we perhaps didn't bring enough variety to what we're doing, and it's probably a sign of a team that's, you know, desperate to make things happen. Um, felt that we had the upper hand, and we're just going to persist and, and go with one method. And I kind of get that, but it didn't work. And and we've got to we've got to be a little bit wiser on the park. But you know, we've had some great conversations and, and work ons about that. And the good thing is that we're you know, we know that they're, they're a much improving team, they're strong defensively, so we're going to get those same sort of pitches this week, so we'll see how far we've grown. Ian, you talked a lot this year about this team evolving and building. 
I think even referred to rebuilding after Christchurch. What's holding them back from taking the next step, do you think? Probably, I, I'd, if you look at the last two games, probably the, the, the consistency of of composure in that last 20 minutes, I reckon. You know, I think if you look at South Africa, um, you know, we, we, we stayed calm, we, we, we stayed in the moment in that last 20, and, and even under a little bit of scoreboard pressure, we, we stuck to, to, make, to trusting the decisions that we make. I thought last week we, we, we went away from that a little bit. And, you know, it's frustrating, isn't it? And it's, it's something that we are working hard on to, to grow the confidence of that last part of the game, to make sure that, that we, we embrace those moments but also stay really clear in our decision making. And I think that's probably the one thing. There's other areas that are, are grown, uh, I, I think, are, you know, have, have really grown through that time period. But again, we've, you look at our set piece last week, you look at our line out scrum, well, absolutely dominant, you know, for 60 minutes and then it, then, then it faded away when we needed it. So that's, uh, that's the mark of the growth we need to make. Ian, uh, you've opted for minimal changes for the past few weeks. Um, just in terms of selection, if you don't make changes, where does that pressure come on incumbents to, to perform? Sorry? So, okay. Sorry. I'll yeah, you know, yep. um, minimal changes the past few weeks. So not changing the team, so where does the pressure come? Yep. Oh, I think the pressure comes from performance. And, and it always does, but um, yeah, yeah, yes, I guess as a group we are showing a lot of faith in this in this 15. And um, you know, I, I've you know we, we signalled earlier that we, we need to grow combinations. We, we need to, um, and, and we felt that the best way to make changes is on top of a platform that we can then grow our game further and clearly we haven't quite got that platform right yet. So you know, our our hunch is to go with with a group that is is working hard at the moment, that is, is, is slowly building combinations, and I think there's enough evidence that um, we are, we're getting there in some in, in many parts of our game. But it's actually growing that that confidence when we when we get into the the tail end of the game is just consistently been strong, and it's an area that you know I think great All Black teams have always been good in that last 15 minutes of of backing themselves and, and, and doing the right thing. And again, we've got it right in South Africa we, and we've got it wrong at Christchurch. There's, there's been changes to the coaching staff and trying to make changes in various systems, attack, um, Jason Ryan with the forwards and whatnot. Usually those things take time to, to bed in. But from a results perspective, you probably don't have a lot of time. How's, how are you managing that dynamic? Tricky. It's it's not easy, you know. It's not easy. Um, so if you you know, there's definitely some new voices, and, and we're looking at a few new methods behind the scenes. Uh, I'm personally really excited about about that, and and have uh, really enjoyed uh, the, the the trend of where we're going. But it always has to it always has to sort of result in results, doesn't it? That, that's the market that we're in. So I get all that, but. Um, all I know is that I, I really believe in, in the in what's happening behind the scenes, and and I guess when you look at new voices in the coaching group, and, and then it's probably one reason why we haven't made a lot of changes on the park. You know, you don't, we haven't decided we, we didn't want to change all the variables, but we just really feel we just need to cement some things that we're doing now. And um, you look at, I mean, I'm sure everyone's as frustrated, or we're as frustrated as everyone with last week's game because it was a game that. Based on what we saw on the park, it was a game we we felt we did enough to put ourselves in a winning position, and we weren't ruthless enough to do it. So, um, few issues here. Two boys going back to Tatanaki. You were saying you're releasing any more players? Yeah, I think we're releasing about eight players. So, um, we're, so we're releasing more than normal, and primarily based on you know we've had two weeks in South Africa. We've come back. We've had. Some, I guess, some uh, uh, some new coaching voices. So we've wanted the group to stay together um, for last week, and but with with us leaving on Thursday to Melbourne and that being a short week, we can't have players playing next week. So we've made a decision to release quite a few this weekend. On a personal level, Ian, how's this week been? Being back in hometown, have you been able to get away from it at all a little bit more? Or? She's a tough job to get away from. Um, <laughs> 
yeah, particularly in a test week. So, oh, look, I haven't wanted to get away from it, but is it good to be home? Yes, it is. You know, it's um, it's there, there's nothing like sort of uh, going back and have, having a, a night's sleep in your own bed. So I've loved that. Um, figured out that my wife still loves me, which is important to me. <laughs> and um, and but you know, I'm I'm really proud of being from this region and it's been a big part of my rugby so there's a, I guess there's a whole lot of pride of being um, of being involved in the All Blacks in this part of the world and it, and you know personally I'd, I'd love nothing better than to put a, a performance on the park that shows that. If things weren't to go well I'll uh, lose again this weekend um, how secure do you feel? I don't, I don't think like that Aaron <laughs> I'm an optimist. <laughs> Ian What's your message to the public? They're, they're going to see you've come off probably the most disappointing performance of the season, and there's been a few of them. And I guess the perception will be there's no accountability. You haven't made any changes to your starting 15. What's your message to people who might say, well, why isn't someone paid with, a, with, with being dropped? Yeah, good question. I, I guess for those that want blood, I guess we haven't given it, have we? Um, but. Um, I guess the the message is, Mark, is that we're, we've been pretty ruthless and hard on ourselves behind. What, what we're doing now is actually well, okay well what do we believe in and we actually believe in some things that we're working on now and we believe that there's enough evidence that there were some things going really good but man it didn't it didn't translate to the result that we wanted and and we think the best way to build the confidence in those key pressure moments is to put the guys out there that have I guess have just been through it have felt it and now we've talked about some different solutions so we're backing that but um, there's pressure on. There's always pressure on individuals when they run out in a black jersey, and 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 we're expecting a response in that particular area. And just the other side, is it, are you confident that some of those guys, particularly in the pack, that played a lot of rugby this year, they might have looked a little bit tired back into that test? Are you confident <coughs> guys are just like Sammy Whitelock, who's played a lot of rugby in his career? They've still got the spring in their step. They've still got what they need. Yeah, look, oh, I think Sammy's played some great tests. Ironically, the last couple of months, um, and and frankly, the, the the yellow card near the end of the game didn't help some of that, where we had to leave a few legs on. So that's that's something that's a bit of a niggle in the last couple of tests is that getting that yellow card near the end, where we we maybe can't make the change that that we want. But am I confident? Yes, I am, um, and. In, in terms of, of the players, but they also know that we've got to respond. Ian, can you talk to us about the development of Roger to a ship as an All Black? I know when you named the team, you were quite keen to get a hold of him and work on a few things. Can you talk about his development as, as a player? Is he starting to, you know, you start to see the things that would give you confidence to put him into a starting test match situation at any stage? So yeah, look, we're starting to see, uh, you know, pretty clear, and he's a fast learner. His, his, his work um, from the attacking side, particularly getting involved uh, around our forwards in the middle of the park, is something that he hasn't spent a lot of time on during Super Rugby, so that's been taking a little while. His instincts at the breakdown are probably, um, you know, the, the number one growth point for him, and, and again, we've seen some really good strides in that space, and so... He's another one of the guys that will be playing um, NPC this weekend and, and there's some aspects that he can go away and work on in, in, in that space. So um, overall, re really, really pleased with the growth, but I, I guess it's it's now just waiting for the opportunity. When, when you do release players, are you speaking specifically to the provincial coaches about um, what you are asking them to do or is it one of those cases where you just go away and play? Yeah, there's a little bit of just go away and play. Look, the coaches have been outstanding and there'll be some coaches that, you know, that if there's a, a, a sort of, a, I guess if there's a key area that we do want a player to develop, we'll certainly share that. But it's a bit hard for for the NPC coaches to, to change things that they're doing and, and we plonk players back in. So it's not as easy as, as you think it is. So 
So the general message is we, the player goes with a couple of key things that we want them to focus on, and 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 that's probably a little bit more general to them as a rugby player than than specific to a game plan type scenario. And do you think we're starting to see the results of prolonged Argentine participation in, in the rugby championship, like since they came in 10, 11 years ago? You know, like is it no accident that we're starting to see? Argentina tip up yourselves, Wallabies, stuff like that on a more regular basis? Yeah, well, in some ways, yes. I mean, their, their scenario has changed dramatically, hasn't it? Like, they, they, when, when they were involved in super rugby, they were probably guilty of getting worn out because of all the travel they did. And, and uh, whereas the last couple of years, they've, they've become basically European based players playing in, 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 in European competitions and and when they've come together they probably have done a lot less travel than what they used to so um, you know, it could be the flip side of, of them leaving the Super Rugby competition has probably strengthened their, their, their squad from an international side. Ian, you alluded to um, pressure for the players in performance. To reverse that almost, do you put pressure on yourself as a coaching group to come up with the results and come up Stands in Christchurch. Hungry? Does it make you to influence the the return match here? Uh, yeah, like 
I suppose you feel everything, regardless if you're not playing or you're playing in the team. But yeah, I'm just keen to, um, I suppose, add a bit of um, my impact and just just do my job. That's the most important thing. Um, don't try and win it by myself, or you know, try um, determine the result by going out and trying to be a maniac. Just yeah, now my now my set piece and add energy and, and do everything I can to um, put a performance in. You guys obviously lost a few lineouts late in the, the piece there. Has that been an extra area of attention this week? Um, yeah, we did. We did look at it, um, and yeah, it's all. I suppose outside, you always think it's the hooker's fault. So there was a few things that we probably mucked up as a pack. But yeah, um, yeah, there's been a little extra detail. Just trying to nail those those throws. And you know, as, as a hooker, I've been there, and you know, I get around codes, and we've all had those situations that we've let ourselves down. So. Um, yeah, we've just got to work as smarter as a pack and, and make sure we're now those crucial moments when we, when we get the chance. Uh, you from a, like a leadership point of view, especially, especially around the, the discipline last week, has that kind of been a greater responsibility put on the leadership group to, to try and tidy up that, that discipline that I suppose let them back into the contest? Yeah, it's, um, I think it's all up to the individuals that are on the park. Um, it's just not being accurate um, in, the, in the scenarios and the situations that we put in. So. Um, you know, we've been re working really hard in that, and like Colsey said, just trying to do our job. But obviously, um, have a feel of how the how the officials are officiating the, officiating the game and, and adapting to that as quick as possible, um, so that we're not giving um, you know RG the opportunities to just build points and and build pressure. So something that we're um, we're training. Just on that, how do you how do you think? It'll uh, be different with uh, Nick Berry refereeing this weekend as opposed to um, last weekend's referee. Oh, oh, I'm not too sure. Man. I know it's going to be, you know, a physical battle between um, both teams. Um, so there's going to be a lot of he's lying around the breakdown, um, a lot of people going for the ball. So I think we got to just obviously do our bit, um, but also um, try and I guess feel and how. The rest riffing the breakdown, or have a chat to him before the game, um, and and be able to go. For it. Just at the end of um, last weekend's game, with the penalty a couple of minutes out, whose call was it to go kick for the corner? Um, was there also thought of knocking over the three, try to get back, and try to win the game? Yeah. What was the sort of process? Michael. Thought we could get some points, but obviously, and and in, um, you can and and think of different scenarios of what could have happened. But yeah, it's just something that we pull back didn't execute. Was it uh, sort of be happy with the draw against them you know, at that time, as opposed to trying a tough, tough uh, way to victory? Yeah, if you looked at the game, um, it was a bit, you know, we. We were building multiple phases, but we couldn't quite get our game going. So um, my my mindset was taking the three and then getting the ball kicked back into our own half and trying to get out of our own half. Kind of um, had that feeling or felt like probably wasn't realistic. So yeah, we thought we'd go for the seven pointer. Hardy, you made a call based on instinct. How hard is it when there is a little bit of pressure on to 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 trust that instinct and there and not over? Think the process that you're going through is good. Yeah. Know, you can probably answer that as well, having done the job to a stages. Yeah, um, I think with those pressure moments, train those in the way. So you fall in those instincts. Um, and I think, you know, we got great leaders on the field as well. As well. Um, and, you know, we made the decision to, to, to do that. And there's pressure moments where you come on the field and, um, mate, it's easy in hindsight when, you know, depending on the result. If you win, great call. If you lose, terrible call. <laughs> so um, that's just the world we live in, mate. And um, those are the pressure moments that I guess as an All Black, we, we love to live in. And sometimes we get it right, sometimes we get it wrong. And that's just the reality of it. Yeah, I think uh, you, uh, you, uh, you do a lot of thinking around the mental side of sport and life. Yes. Yeah. I mean, just how, you know, how would you describe the kind of mindset, the mental sort of state that you guys are in at the moment and how and how you know, important getting the right to kind of fixing some of these problems you're having as a team? 
Yeah. Um, obviously, you know, our, our focus is staying together and staying tight. Um, really, and actually being really accountable um, to ourselves and in terms of what's going wrong in our game and what we have to do. Um, you know, that's something that we really look hard at ourselves. But yeah, one thing is, you know, when we're going through these times, it's, it's staying staying tight but at the same time actually pulling each other up on what needs to be done to get the result so um, you know we're tight connected um, and just got to turn up every day and nail our job. Dane you've always been a kind of a you know straight comes to what the team needs to do has it almost gone past that now or is it kind of I mean you, know, I mean, you can't you know bulk each other over and over and over again can you I mean what What's your feeling around what's needed to kind of turn this thing around? Um, yeah, it's obviously a unique situation being in this team and, uh, and what we're going through. I think there's a process. Like after the game, you always feel like the world's ended, like the first couple of days. And then I think the review and like Artie said, the accountability is it gives you, I suppose, solutions that you can actually get better and, and fix up things that you're not getting right. So I think the, the number one thing is getting solutions on how to close out games, win the game and be better in that. And then... I've been in a couple of teams where we were, I think the thing at the moment, there's been no like blame game, pointing the finger or people going rogue on their own kind of tour. It's been a real collective um, buy-in to try and get the result and be consistent in our, in our performance, which is, I think, a real positive. Um, so yeah, I think those have been the two biggest things. And uh, I suppose being on the outside, you might not think that's probably happening, but there's a lot of hard work that's happening to um, to get the win, right. and we needed that. So, if we, as soon as we go rogue and become individual, that's when I think it's going to get worse. So, uh, I think. yeah, and you touched on it. This is kind of a new territory for you guys, isn't it? You, you're figuring yeah. out something that's different for you guys. Yeah, it's it's yeah. Unfortunately, it is. It's it's a place that this team hasn't been. Um, so, everyone's just got to stand up, get um, accountability. If someone comes at you for you're not doing the job right, then you just got to get on with it and, and take the feedback on board. And, and like I said that you just got to be clear and free. Like there's a lot of stuff that's happening, but at the end of the job, just go out there, um, enjoy the occasion, and then just do your job. Simple as that. Um, and you've got a lot of faith in the starting fifteen um, week after week. I guess as a group, do you feel like you guys? I know the result it didn't go your way, but throughout this year, do you feel like this this group in the starting fifteen is evolving each game? Yeah, it is. Like if you look in the weekend, for majority of that game, we should have closed out that game and and finished it, um, but we didn't. So yeah, it's as a player, if you get selected, you get selected, and and you back yourself to and you back the trusted mates that you get selected next year and do a job. Um, and you know that process out of our hands. All we can do is turn up. Um, I feel like this. Team like Colsey said, it's been in a unfamiliar territory. Um, the All Blacks haven't been in this kind of big situation like this before, so uh, we're nav navigating that space too. Um, all I know is that the boys that get named, uh, they never take it for granted, so they always try and go out there and, and try to be their best, and at the same time, be free and clear and just jam. How important are the uh, combinations with no chance? Starting with the DM, um, you know, how much is that uh, lie towards next year, and, and all that as well. How important the combinations? Yeah, combinations and positioning. Um, yeah, I guess you know you could, you can say it's important to build, um, you know, the the chemistry around that um, in terms of thinking of next year. May I'm thinking about today, <laughs> pretty much, and this weekend. So. Um, yeah, it's important. It's important to build combinations, but at the same time, um, yeah, you got to perform um, under those pressure moments. And if you don't, then um, you know things can happen. And just on the loose forwards, one, um, on the loose forwards, what's sort of the key to getting that sort of dominance right that might have been, you know, not there in recent times? Hmm. Sort of focus is there for them. Um, I'm not too sure, mate. Do you feel like we haven't been dominated, uh, do, uh, dominating the last couple of games, or is that all? Yeah, perhaps. Oh, is that what you're meaning? We, oh, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I felt like the Lucy's 
you know, have been kind of up uh, and we navigate, navigate the space of just new breed of players. Um, I think for so long New Zealand's been used to um, really cause the drums that have been quite like the amazing um, and you've got a bunch of new boys coming through and, and us stuff as well that are trying to stamp their mark. Um, so it's a it's a day to day, week to week process. Um, but yeah, I feel working well and we're we're putting our best foot forward. Adi. Sorry, Adi. Thank you. Cheers, On Sunday, Ian Foster sort of said um, the All Blacks need to sort of break their DNA, is how he termed it, of just running the ball no matter what. Uh, I guess we've been chasing the game pretty much the end. Um, just wondering what you thought of those comments. Do you feel that that is a sort of a bit of a mindset that tends to break out of all of uh, Sort of my understanding was um, there's just not one way to score points. Um, sort of variation in, in what we can do to build pressure. Um, kicking, other tactics that that might work, and um, against the Argentinian team that were fired up, ready to to defend anything, I think we, we could have been smarter. What about you? You know, the same question. Do you think the All Blacks at times are guilty of playing the running game too much? Um, yeah, I think the variety is. I think the the mentality is to want to be able to hold the ball build pressure, use our attack. But as we see with the Northern Hemisphere teams and, and the teams so far in the Rugby Championship, it's been they want to give us the ball, they don't really want to play, and they're really attacking our breakdown. And um, so if you attack with the ball for a long period of time, you're giving them opportunities and they're taking them. Um, so variation, that was something we looked at hard out in the review around, we, we can still use our kicking game, um, use the ball, um, to pressure teams and and obviously turn them around because teams at the moment are going two or three phases and then just kicking it because um, that's their tactic and they um, they try to punish us at the breakdown. Really. That's what they did. Rich, from I guess you know the players are talking about taking responsibility for, for your own being the first kind of step in the solution. What did you take out of that cross stitch test? How can you, in terms of how can you be better this week? I think just points in the game. Uh, yeah, I think there were times we couldn't apply pressure because of errors. Um, and that's just, in a nutshell, that's really simple. Uh, you make a mistake, 
you hand the ball over, um, you're inaccurate, you're penalised, and I think um, accuracy is a really big one for us this week, and I think we didn't, we didn't have a lot, um, or a lot of that together to have really good phases and, and parts where we were putting pressure on them. Yeah, that's sort of my take on it. In terms of the tactical game, do you take onus on that? Because you, know, you are one of the leaders in that side of it. Yeah, I do. I think um, technically we could have kicked more a little bit, but you look in those last game, uh, we're in their half, firing shot, and um, they defended well and penalised for holding on or side entry. And, um, there's nothing else you can do apart from ball a little wider, um, clean a little faster, um, working on and yeah, just uh, have another opportunity. Aaron, how do you change the mindset of a lifetime if you're talking about, you know, maybe not running the ball as much because you're probably in this room that's playing rugby, that's what they just wanted to do when they were a kid, get the ball and, and charge. When you get to this of your career as a professional player, how hard is it that is so ingrained to to have that time to pause, even though it's momentarily in a test match, to, to make those decisions, to fight an instinct, I suppose, to have Yeah, I think it's um, key to be really aligned as a group around uh, our identity as what we help play. And it isn't trying to for long periods of time if we're going anywhere. And as a nine and ten, we've talked about it a lot around the position, turn them around, pressure them, and read the situation of where the game is at, and then that the sense of Argy weren't trying to win the game, they were trying not to lose it, and they used that, and um, we played into their hands in that sense. But um, there's plenty of opportunities, um, plenty of space to turn them around, but also around using the ball wider channels. Um, spreading them out and when we were doing that when we had the balance of playing in the front and the back having our good ball carriers bend them because they're not coming with massive line speed like we faced with Ireland or South Africa but they fill the field well and they tackle well and um, yeah so it's not really a point but it's just more being really you know bulletproof clear on how we're trying to play and when we lose momentum, we need to turn them around and where is the space? Because there is um, plenty of space to be able to do that. So is it more of a cerebral game from your, pos your positions as, as, a, as drivers? Is it more a mental side of things as much as it is physical? Maybe compared to earlier on in your career? No, I think any time you think about rugby and you've got the balance right or you get things right, it's around keeping your forwards going forward and that's through kicking or passing and attacking and reading those moments where they've got a good thick line, there's got to be space in behind and when they defend with 13 or so in the front line and they've got two guys in the bunkers, there's space somewhere and as we saw with the Argies, they didn't go plus, plus four or five phases at all so they don't want the ball, we need to be able to turn them around and make them play the game that they don't want to and yeah, we've just got to be better at the breakdown is the main one and um, attacking together. So given that those other teams that you have mentioned are having success, how confident are you that the All Blacks have got the right style and the right philosophy about playing rugby for this modern game? I'm very confident in our team's ability. If you watch the first half, minus some of our discipline for offsides and that, which gave them points, we were dominating them. We were breaking them up. We were walking up the field through our phase play attack and we're just unable to get over the line but there's some there's a lot of positives there in that first half around how we felt with the scoreboard and our own eagerness to want to get off the line or not get of the scoreboard of them being able to stack moment on moment through three points and they're real gut checks and then um, yeah so it's just around the balance of that but I'm totally confident in our boys um, everyone's got the knives out throwing them at us so 
we don't mind that. The pressure we're putting on ourselves as leaders and as group, um, we're walking towards that. Rich, just on that, I suppose, is it, is it important for you guys as a group to reflect on that first half as much as it is what happened in the second half? Yes, a lot's been made of the discipline, but is it important to reflect on what worked well and the rewards you got in the first half where you were dominated? Yeah, very much so. We, uh, as Nagy said, we put a lot of pressure on them and um, that was just playing um, free-flowing footy and I think uh, when we can get to that and understand when can we get to it, how, um, th then we're in a good spot, but it's footy, it's not always free-flowing, so how can we put pressure on somewhere else? And I think that's a lot of the learnings that we took out of the game. How's Joe been coming in charge of the attack? I know it's only been a couple of weeks so far, but how's his influence been um, on, the, on the attack side of things? He's awesome. Yeah, I love him. Uh, I haven't um, met him previous before the ABs, but just love his uh, different perspective. And uh, it's always to have someone with a new fresh pair of eyes to, to explain things a bit differently. So he's added a lot to this group and just look forward to working with him more uh, along the way. Karen, for a team that's previously been renowned for its consistency, how frustrating is it to sort of become inconsistent as a, as a senior player? Um, I think it's, it's, we're sort of stuck in the bottle of each week, so we're trying to always get better. And I think in the last month we've made massive strides through our defence. Um, our forwards have given us amazing platform through the scrum and the line-out. There's, there's not much we can say to them. They're doing amazing work there. Um, I think it's just the consistency of, you know, we're chasing the 80-minute performance, and I don't think we've been able to hit. We sort of had great patches this year, and. 20 minutes versus Ireland in the first game. Um, you know, Africa over there at Ellis Park, the last 10 minutes, the bench coming on, like there's, 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 it's in there. So that balance of our forwards giving us the ball, our specs using it uh, right. When we get our breakdown right, our D's in a really good spot. Teams aren't scoring many tries against us through just striking at us. So it's all there. It's just around putting it together and we're, <laughs> we're working bloody hard um, like I said, the pressure we're putting on ourselves to get better um, is there and, you know, it's, it's coming. And we're just really excited about playing the Argies again. Um, it's the beauty of, of the Rugby Championship. You get two shots of them and, you know, they got the first one and they're going to come to Hamilton and we felt each other out for 80 minutes last week. So we're looking forward to another battle. And... Trust me, there's a lot of boys that are ready to play on Sunday to try to fix this and make it right. And um, to be given the opportunity again is, um, is bloody exciting. Aaron, in your time playing in the Rugby Championship, is this the most competitive it's been across all four teams? Um, yep, yeah, I'd say, well, results-wise, yep. Yeah. Um, I think definitely in the early part of the, super, uh, the Rugby Championship was... Africa and Australia were, it was whoever could get the two wins for another team. So there was always the odd split, win one, lose one, but it's going to come down to in the next few weeks, it's going to be very exciting. And uh, the winner is going to, it's going to come down to a bonus point or something, points differential, who knows, but it's, it's, it's really cool to see. But I think that's the stage of world rugby at the moment. Um, every team in that top 10 rankings is, can lose and win and and that's the beauty of our sport the the levels just come so far and there's no any easy wins anymore there's none of that it's just what team shows up and when they show up you you've got to make sure your game's right where it needs to be you alluded to it just before but do you almost look at this match as, as a do or die in a position that all blacks haven't really <coughs> been in, in, a, in a rugby championship before <laughs> Mate, we're all blacks, we're always, it's always do or die. Um, that's how we see the game. Um, the pressure's to perform. Whenever you get given the black jersey, you have a, you have a huge role to play. The pressure's always on us, we know that. And, you know, and rightly so. We've got a rich and proud history as a nation and as a rugby nation. And um, we haven't been getting it right lately. And, you know, it's front of mind for us. And, yeah, we just, I can't wait. We're just going to focus on this game and and get it right. I know one I last one, please. I know it hasn't been a, um, 
uh, a long time since the two new assistants have come in, but do you feel like there's a, a bit of a step um, forward since they've, they've come in? I've got a good view of the Fords and the work I see them do and I'm around the line out in Scrum a bit and he's got them humming and like I've said before around the set piece it's, 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 it's at a real scary place which is pretty cool. Our mall on the weekend, being able to put the ball in in your half at a Scrum and just sit at the back and watch it get a penalty relieves pressure. So they've got another big shift but the work Jace Ryan's doing and then what Joe brings with his level of detail and intensity it's just what we needed. Um, it's it's been great, and Joe sees the game differently. He sees things that um, only Joe would see. I'd say, and uh, reminds me a lot of Wayne Smith in the sense of his intensity and his level of detail. Because if you don't know your stuff or your homework, he calls you out pretty quick. He asks you pretty forward questions around, oh, what does this guy do here? What's the trigger here for the switch? If you don't know or haven't done your homework, yeah get embarrassed in front of everyone pretty quickly so he um, brings that without having to say too much either. Has that been hard to get used to Aaron with Joe and is he holding anything back as well because it's only been a couple of weeks and doesn't probably want to overload? Nah he's come in and we, his first presentation was bone deep, very um, very honest but it's all things that it's nothing special either it's always just the little things and the things that when you probably not have a break in rugby but you think oh it's not on me or it's not a big I can't really affect the play stuff like that but his it's the stuff he does between the drills and comes over to you if you did a little something and that he'll hit it right then but um, you know I think growing up the especially where we're at at the moment just no, telling it straight fixing it right then and assuming nothing um, it's been great with Joe and um, already seen it at training even in walkthroughs and that he chases complete detail every time and that's um it's been cool and um like i said you gotta make sure it's you're always he's always watching <laughs> anyone's cool. been in detention yet no no, <laughs> no it's good cool thanks everyone thank you thank you, thank you guys